Have you ever wondered what makes an old electromechanical alarm clock tick? Yeah, I was curious too and so I took one apart to find out. Yeah, welcome to something completely unrelated to lock picking. You can see I took one of these electromechanical alarm clocks apart. It was an old lock that was given to me by my mom. The lock was broken, uh, you could not adjust the time anymore. So it was a great opportunity for me to see what's inside. Um, I broke one of these gears in the process of uh, disassembling, but these parts are actually not relevant to understand how the heart of the lock works. So this is the little box, the little container that um, contained all the gears and all the mechanism. I removed everything except the motor and I soldered two wires on the driving coil so that we can later on measure the signal and see how it looks like uh, on a scope. But let's start by looking inside. I opened the little window so we can inspect the motor while it's doing its job. Here we can see the gear that rotates with one revolution per second or half a revolution per second I think and that's making the tick or the, the sound, the typical sound that these uh, alarm clocks make. I painted it black on one side so we can see that it's actually spinning. Pretty cool. Alright, let's open it up and see what's inside. I just learned while I um, checked the mechanism that this motor is called Lavette motor and it took me a, quite a while to understand how this works. So I hope I can make this um, understandable for you as well. Yeah, so what we can see here is the following. We have a circuit on the left hand side, we have a battery, uh, we have um, well the place for the gear stack and uh, some uh, holes here for accepting other gears but this is not relevant. Um, the driving part is this here, the, the coil and this little gear here. Yeah, it's a lavette motor and I try to explain to you how this works. Um, first of all this circuit causes um, a frequency of 1 Hz, um, about. Um, this is done by this um, quartz, I don't know the correct English uh, term, but this is um, a frequency component that um, has a very high frequency and there is a frequency divider uh, underneath this um, plate here, so that the final frequency that uh, this coil is driven with is uh, 1 Hz. And that means that this coil um, gets impulses um, once a second um, and yeah, causes a magnet field, magnetic field uh, south north and um, north south, so it's alternating uh, all the time. And this causes this little gear here to spin. Um, if the, the cover is on because it needs a perfect alignment within its uh, little space here. And this gear here is actually um, a, magnet, a magnet, so it's a permanent magnet with one, uh, so it's a, a magnet like uh, let's say we have south here and north there when it's aligned like this. I can show it to you um, with a compass. Yeah, so here we have the compass and here is this little gear. Oops. And I hold it here in one of these grooves. And when I turn it, now one side of the needle is attracted and I spin it around and now the other side is attracted. So this is a magnet Oops, that's oriented perpendicular to the um, axis and now you can imagine that when the magnet 
the magnetic field here changes north south south north that um, one time the um, little gear here gets attracted in this orientation and in the same orientation next time um, it gets repelled so it's kind of um, intuitive that something happens here that there is a force applied to this to this gear here but it doesn't explain why it is spinning when um, it's perfectly aligned so currently it's just um, arbitrarily uh, jumping around and maybe if I can hold it steady in the very center um, I can show you that it does spin actually I use this hand here yeah, so here you can see that it actually does spin if it's held perfectly in the middle. So first of all it does spin, it does not just flip around and it spins in one direction. And that's pretty interesting and um, I will try to explain how this works. Here is a little sketch of the metal plate and the coil the metal plate and the coil and the place where the rotor goes to. I've also made a rotor and so we can hopefully simulate how this works uh, on paper. Yeah, the most important aspect on this lavette motor is that there is an um, uh, offset in the position of the rotor when there is no uh, current running through the coil. So you can see that the uh, shape of this metal plate is not um, regular, it's not symmetric. Um, there's a little bit more here and a little bit less there and this causes this rotor to be aligned not straight when there is hmm, not straight when there is running no current through the coil but maybe angled like this. So without uh, voltage um, applied to this uh, coil we might have a stable position of the uh, rotor like so. And now let's assume we have uh, we run um, current through the coil which causes a south here and a north there. That means, sorry, then these two north get repelled and these two south get repelled and so this spins like that. And please keep in mind, uh, or please note, that the pulse is very short, so there's only a sh very short time the current is running through the coil and then there is no um, magnetic field here anymore. And so after this has spun at 180 degree, it's stable again as there is no um, magnetic field here anymore. And we know that this orientation here is the stable orientation. Now the um, direction of the current changes and the next pulse causes a south here and a north there. So again this gets repelled and this gets repelled. So again it turns in this direction counterclockwise. And as there is only a short moment where the pulse um, runs through the coil, we have no a magnetic field anymore and next time we have north again and south again and it gets repelled and it turns around in a defined um, orientation in this case it's turning uh, counterclockwise and so because of this um, offset orientation um, yeah this spins um, in a defined direction and not just uh, wobbling around. So pretty cool invention this lavette motor. So here's the real object again without a battery and uh, we can then hopefully see that there is a preferred position uh, orientation of the rotor which is not straight. Um, I think the preferred orientation is um, oriented in this way and I've marked one uh, pole of the magnet with a uh, black sharpie. So currently it is well aligned uh, in the preferred orientation 
and it's kind of want to stay there. You can see when I turn it, it jumps back. Oh, or it jumps to the uh, 180 degree direction. Doesn't want to move away. Let's see if we can let it stay there. Nope. Or it jumps in this direction again. So clearly we can see that there is a preference uh, for this orientation. Yeah, pretty cool. So I think we have now all the bits together. Um, how this um, works. We can maybe look into the um, details of the circuit a little bit uh, closer uh, just before we go downstairs and look at the signal with a scope. I can get this out here. So what do we have here? We have the coil, we have the metal plate around, we have this little speaker that makes the uh, sound when uh, the alarm clock wanna wake wanna uh, wake you up so doo -doo, you know <laughs> and then we have um, oops then we have uh, quartz I don't know if this is the right English word but um, this gives a very high frequency um, and on the other side we have a frequent frequency divider so the high frequency that this thing uh, generates gets divided um, until it is only once a second um, and this is a switch um, if you don't have this paper that blocks the switch it makes this horrible sound um, you have to push on it or pull on it to get it off and there is a little uh, transistor. I'm not sure what this is good for. Maybe for um, amplification of the uh, generated signal so that there is running more current through the coil. Ah, maybe I can show you or I can um, let you hear how this horrible noise sounds like. I can get this back in. That's how it sounds, and now you have to pull on it, or you have to push it down, then it stops. Okay, um, finally I want to show you the signal on this two, these two leads. Um, so I have to go downstairs to show it to you on a scope. So here's my setup. The input of the scope is connected to the, uh, to the coil, to the two wires that are soldered to the leads of the coil and we can hear the motor spinning while we look at the signal. The setup on the scope is currently so that uh, it's synchronized with the um, with the pulse. So when the when there is um, a signal on the on the coil, um, it starts here. And we can see it starts here and there's another pulse here at the end. And when we count, there are 10 divisions and it's currently set to 100 milliseconds per division so that means that there is a pulse every second so every second the rotor turns 180 degrees let me change the scope setup so that we can see how long the pulse actually is so here we can estimate the length of a signal it's currently not set to synchronization mode so we can see the positive and the negative pulse. But it's hard to see how, how long this is. So I set it to synchronized mode, which causes only the positive uh, signal to be shown. But we can some kind of see that it stops here. So around here, so it starts there and it stops here. These are about uh, six uh, divisions, so the pulse length is six divisions and when we look um, at the adjustment, one division is um, five milliseconds, so five times six, it's about 30 milliseconds of pulse width. Huh. Pretty cool. So these values are actually crucial for the uh, Lavette motor to work correctly, but I think this is 
uh, well known because these are mass produced and pretty solid and uh, yeah very interesting to see and understand and learn how this actually works I hope you have enjoyed this little excursion to a lavette motor yeah thanks for watching happy experimenting <laughs> cheers and bye bye